Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Martial Mind Podcast. We are three brothers of... of <laughs> our guests hate us. Check. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Martial Mind Podcast. We are three brothers of training... Whoa. Three brothers of training, three brothers of training kung fu. Three brothers of training kung fu. Three brothers of scrap metal. Hi, everyone. We... Oh, fuck. <laughs> Hi everybody and welcome to the Martial Mind Podcast. We are three training brothers of Shaolin Kung Fu talking about how a training and Shaolin interact with our lives, relationships, and everything else in between. Today we have a super special episode for you where we have our illustrious teachers, Sigun Greg and Sifu Lloyd, and also Jeff Chan from MMA Shredded. So we're going to talk about a sparring and training uh, breakdown and uh, get into it. <laughs> <laughs> and boom. And go. So today was a bit of a special day today. Um, we typically, from my time training here at the school, we have not really had almost anyone come down at all to spar. Um, once or twice, maybe. We've gone once or twice to some places, you know, some other places, but it's basically... Good. That's good. We'll keep that in. A little traffic. Um, <laughs> um, but... I reached out to Jeff probably, what, like a month and a half ago? Something like that? Exactly, and, uh, exactly a month and a half ago. He just count down the days <laughs> you won't let him forget about it. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I- and Every I, 15 minutes, you know, can't you wait know, for this day. I'm really excited. And I just, uh, you know, I, I, I shot you a DM and asked if you wanted to come down and train and spar. And, you know, because I love the type of content that you do and seeing your, you know, character and the type of fighter that you are really is who we've been looking for to not only make content with, but to train with as well. So uh, yeah, we got probably about an hour of Sanda training and you know uh, drill drill training down with partner work and in the mirror, and then we uh, did about probably an hour of technical sparring. Mm -hmm. So I mean, just to hand it over to you, I mean, thoughts, impressions, how you felt coming into it, <clears throat> you know. I can't wait to look at the footage when I spar, and I sorry when I spar, I usually have the camera on, um, and I usually know what is good footage. So okay. I. I I promise it's, a, it's, <laughs> it's good, good footage. Everyone's, yeah. gonna, everyone's gonna look good. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> super excited um, to, to, to edit it and release it. Um, yeah, so when you reached out, it was actually the first time I've encountered Shaolin Kung Fu, mm. uh, Kung Fu in general. There was one time I was in Germany and there was a martial arts festival where there was like 20 different martial arts instructors mm. and they each, like there was a karate guy, a Kung Fu guy, BJJ guy, Muay Thai mm -hmm. guy, etc. So I maybe, I learned like, three techniques of Kung Fu, okay. but that's all mm. I've ever uh, encountered with Kung Fu. So mm. when you reached out and said uh, Shaolin Kung Fu, I was very, very interested. That's I was true. already very happy to uh, come down and try it out. And it's been a great experience. Um, all the guys, super skilled, and the techniques are really slick. Thank you very much. Yeah, it means all, and it's all... It's all him. It's all, yeah. <laughs> 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 Don't talk to you, Sigong. Talk to you. Um, so what, what were your thoughts on the training today? Loved it. Absolutely loved it. I uh, hate I hate being old or getting old, but um, it's great to see. Uh, it's great to see, it's refreshing that you know Jeff came down and from a different style and a different art, and actually you know everybody. It seems like he felt at home, mm -hmm. and there was no pressure, there was no oh. ego. Everything was checked at the door, and it was just work. And to me, it's refreshing because honestly just tired of all the bullshit and all the nonsense you know and all the schools saying one's better than the other and this is better than the other and you know we were talking uh, earlier and you know I, I always say that it's it's not the style that sucks you suck it's the person that sucks <laughs> right so the styles every style out there is definitely effective um, and then it's great to be able to exchange and to see how everything works together and also to see the similarities in the fighting you know and it was awesome it was just a breath of fresh air and uh, he is welcome at my school anytime he wants to be here. Uh, and we haven't had a lot of people coming to the. We had a couple people um, come to the school. Like in the back, in the old days, it was different. But nowadays, you know, very few people. And when they come here, it's always ego. It's always nonsense, and somebody is always limping home. You know, mm. and uh, to just to just to work out and just have fun and you hit good. And it's like you smile. You know what I mean? And you're you're working. It's technical. It's work, and uh, that's the best. It's the best way to be. So yeah. I enjoyed it. I couldn't have had a better day. I just wish I was a little younger. <laughs> no, dude. Um, there's something that I always say, uh, a little nicer. Uh, I believe every <laughs> martial arts work. It just depends who uses it. Yeah. And um, when I first started, um, in Mu I started Muay Thai. Hmm. And I actually stayed away from traditional martial artists when I was younger. I'm Chinese. And when you know, there was a lot of racism when I was a kid. And yeah. 
people would call me Jackie Chan and people would be like, uh, you do Kung Fu or, mm. or, or Jet Li, Jackie Chan, stuff like that. Um, so for me, I actually stayed away from traditional martial arts and, and stuck with Western martial arts like boxing and Muay Thai. So Muay Thai was my, the first. And at that time, at that age, I always actually thought karate sucked, Taekwondo sucked, Kung Fu sucked. I used to believe that. And as I got more experience in martial arts and competing and meeting other people, I realized that all martial arts work. It just depends who's doing it and mm. how long you've been doing it. That is a nice, nice way of saying it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, karate is a perfect example. I used to talk so much crap about karate. I used to, I used to think like they're fighting with their hands by their waist. They're going to get knocked out so easily. Now, if you watch most of my sparring videos, I drop my hands and I, I realize how effective it is. Um, you draw people in. Draw people in, yeah. Punch yeah. punch uh, outside of the peripherals. They don't expect it. Um, and it's a, a lot more of a skill. It takes more skill to be good at karate because you need to have that uh, distance management. Mm. Whereas I would say boxing, <clears throat> you learn it for a year, you can beat someone who trained maybe karate for a year because mm. it's, it's, it's basic. basic, it's simple. You shell up. How, 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 easy, how hard is that? You just shell up. Mm. So that's why people mm. who train boxing end up becoming or people think boxing is more effective than karate because you train it for a year you're going to beat the guy who did karate it, for a year it takes a longer skit to get, gain the skill set it takes longer yes but it doesn't necessarily mean it's better or worse and that's yes. exactly it in, in train i'm sorry Jeff. In, in training here i've definitely <clears> found that and you know of course you know when you first start first start training you have your friends who train stuff and you're all like you know just piss and vinegar and talking shit and just like, you know, oh, well, that doesn't work. Well, if I really, if I really did this, then it might work. And you're like 18 years old and don't know anything. So you're just, but. Grab this hand. No, it, grab this hand. No, with your other hand. <laughs> hand. No, <laughs> hand. Um, but it's, you know, seeing, mm -hmm. kind of having that immediate frustration of being a, a white session, a yellow session, barely even being able to tread water in, in the system. Cause it's so, there's so much depth and there's, and to, you know, what I like with it is it's so well-rounded and everything is connected. It's not just like you have stand-up, you have groundwork and you have this. It's like all the forms are, you know, it's it's all integrated it, it, and, and it's a seamless transition from stand-up to trapping, to grappling, to throwing, to close quarter strike, to long, to, you know, to long distance strikes. But there is, you know, especially for the first few years, more of that slower ascension into one, understanding it, but two, to even put a good foot forward in applying it in any sort of applicable way. For, for me personally, you know, your white session, you're like, what the fuck is, what is this? Like, what is happening? You know, you just feel like, a, you know, you're just learning English. You're just like, I don't know what the hell's going on. Like people are just, you know, so it's, I've noticed that too. And like people who do boxing or stuff where it's a, a quicker kit to get, to get started. Yeah, like, here's the fundamentals. Yeah. They get good at three or four punches and they can, you know, beat the shit out of someone who doesn't know what they're doing, you know, pretty, pretty easily, you know? And I'm great, very grateful that I have both of you as, the example coming forward that we can even you know we we can have somebody like you come to the school and we can just have this mutual respect and we can we can you know trade techniques and have no ego and just be able to train with each other and experience you know each other's skill sets and learn from one another regardless of who's got better this or who's got better mm. that or who's got better wind or whose weight class is whatever it you know we we still have so much that we can all learn from each other and if i didn't have you guys you know i've <laughs> you guys have instilled that in us and made all of this possible. So thank you both, I really. And thank you, Jeff, for being yeah. here again. Yeah. You know, I actually, um, there was one exchange I saw between Jeff and Sifu where it was like, you were almost kind of coaching Jeff in. It was a really, it looked like a really productive exchange. I really noticed that and I really enjoyed that very much. And I wanted to know, Sifu, how, if you can uh, just kind of verbally go over your exchange with Jeff or your training today or uh, what your thoughts were on everything. Well, when I was coming up training, like we did sparring every week every Friday and it was, I don't want to say not nice, but it wasn't nice. <laughs> you know, and every week I was walking out with an eye jammy or busted lip or anything. And it wasn't malice, it's just how we fought. Mm, and it's intensity. I was yeah. telling you guys before, like when we, when now training, in my opinion, the way fight training is, is the way fight training should be. Should be. For every single school. Yeah. And the only reason I'm saying that is because when we were coming up, we didn't stretch. We just got on the floor. We did this. All right, let's go. <laughs> we didn't wear protective gear. The only reason you want to wear protective gear is I didn't want a dental bill. Mm -hmm. All right. We wore those stupid ass little bag gloves yeah, to fight Chuckies. with. We used to call them Chuckies. Chuckies because they had sentry on the Basically just like painted your fist black. Yeah, yeah just kind of right. you know <laughs> so painted Black or red or white. <laughs> you know? yeah. So I came up hard sparring, but as we do it, if somebody got a, got a technique in, I would think, why, why did he get me with that technique? Right? right. So when I was sparring with, with Jeff, 
he's got really good. He he did those uh, fadeaway hooks every time. Every time I was mm. like, fuck, how am I gonna get away from that? How am I gonna get away from that? Oh, let me get inside. You know, so I'm constantly thinking as I'm sparring, and that just came up like that. Mm. You know, so while we're in the clinch, I don't know if you heard me. I was like, go for the leg, go for the leg, because mm-hmm. I, you know, because why train the drill? for like those 45 minutes if I'm not gonna do it mm. with, I'm working with somebody, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And it's not just for me, it's for me and you and in the exchange, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So we can hit and we were hitting, you know, but I was just like, why is he not doing that switch? And that's what I'm thinking in my, in my head. We just did the switch, how come he's not doing that switch? I said, dude, do the switch, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I don't know if you felt that mm-hmm. when we were working. Well, I, I appreciate you uh, teaching me and, 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 and caring and, and helping me. Yeah, but dude, that's what I came up with. Mm-hmm. And now, like, like I said, I was watching some of your videos, and I watched another video of yours of hard sparring, and this guy, and it was so funny, like he had this commentary, and he hit you hard, and you hit him back, and then he gave you the nod, and you were like, no, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Please, stop. I did that because you did that. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, so again, we, I came up with the, we came up, Hit with this rule: hit as hard as you want to get hit. So that's, that's, that's been our motto for 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 32 years of owning the school. And I think he specifically said that in I uh, uh, what was it? I forgot the title of it, but the MMA etiquette. The, I mean the uh, sparring, sparring etiquette, etiquette video. Yeah, I think he one, specifically. One said thing that I noticed too. that was really good about um, all of you guys here is you guys are all bigger guys, heavier guys, and you guys had great control. The thing about um, what what usually escalates sparring, from my experience, is I'm sorry, bigger people. Mm. And those bigger people yep. in hindsight, now that I'm calm, can 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 learn to admit that maybe he didn't have the intention of hitting me hard, but he's a bigger guy. So mm-hmm. when he hits his fifty percent is more than my fifty percent. So I think it's unfair. So I give it a little bit a little bit back. Yeah, yeah. but you should. Yeah, yeah. and then and then he goes up and yeah. then you should. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's yeah. That's yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. handguns yeah. and you're just because <laughs> what you what you experience <laughs> is what I experience all the time coming up. All my trainer brothers were over six feet. Oh, wow. Well. All my trainer brothers were over six feet. And they were 10 years younger than me. I was the oldest one in class. They were all in high school. So I'm competing with kids that can just like do this all day long. Mm-hmm. You know, so They're just like head springing into the school. Dude, you have no yeah, idea. Oh God. You have no idea. <laughs> no idea. So we're all training two hours and then he's all right, get your gloves on, let's go. You know, so. That's, you know, you, you, you're talking about, all right, hit, hit hard and stuff That's like that. That's the Farmville school. That was the, that was the, that was the temple, yeah. <laughs> the temple. Yeah. People oh. have to understand the, the size difference and the age difference. Yeah. yeah. It plays a big part, man. A big part. Mm-hmm. A big part. Uh, you mentioned something um, at the beginning. You're saying how you spar a lot or used to spar a lot. And I think a lot of schools nowadays have been kind of, what, what's the term? Being washed off. Water down, uh, water, water down, down, water down. down. Essentially, yeah. they don't spar anymore. We were talking about it earlier. They don't yeah, spar yeah. anymore. So that's why people think karate or kung fu doesn't work. But in fact, it's just being watered down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, a lot of it's being watered down because they want to keep their students. You don't want, you know, the students come in and they're working out really hard. Then they put gloves on, they get smacked in the face, and they're like, oh, I don't want to do this. <laughs> you know what I mean? They, they'd rather go to a gym, hit a bag for a little bit, and then go home, and then they feel better, you know? Mm. So, you know, teachers are scared to lose their students, especially if it's their 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 only income, right? Yeah. So they water it down, they make it easier. Uh, for me, because we're in an industrial area, the rent is cheaper, right? So I can do that. We can we can hit harder and you yeah, know dude. people will eventually find people eventually find, find the school this. what they yeah. that so they want to be. The old be school at. was in a basement. Yeah. In a in a built in a in an office building in a basement. In a basement. You couldn't Illeg- fly. Illegally. Dude, I tell you, <laughs> I drove past it because he made this he made this homemade billboard out front of the house, uh, out front of the school. And it said, Shaolin Kung Fu. So for like the first year, I drove past it. It's like, all right, they must be doing construction to put the school up. <laughs> Where's the school? Um, Jordan Miles, every year, I was like, when is this goddamn school going up? Like a spray paint <laughs> like, sign on Dude, I've had people call me up. They're like, oh, we love the billboard. Yeah. Where's, the the billboard? Where's, Where's the school? Where's the school? It's about 50 <laughs> yards away. <laughs> It's in so, the ground. <laughs> when you go downstairs, you know, and, and the training floor, it doesn't even look that big, but the training floor is as big as this. So, and the rent was cheap. So he didn't care. He, he had us doing stuff that would get people sued today. Oh my God. Oh <laughs> my God. Get people sued today. No fire exit. No, no. no, no, no fire exit. There was only one way out of the building. We had a pole that went across the ceiling and we would run. We would do all our Shaolin training and then we'd run up 
the side of the wall, grab the Steve pole. Steve was laughing over there because he knows. We would, <laughs> we would, we would, you know, come across halfway through, do pull ups, come across to the other side and drop down. So it's all about that stamina and inter body, inter muscle connection, and everything else. We did stupid shit, climbing outside the building. There was like this of the stairs. We were climbing the sides of the walls. I mean, people could have fallen. They could have cracked their head. Dude, I did such bad stuff. You know, and I'm like, nowadays it's like, you know, people fall on the mat and they get hurt. And you're like, oh, please don't sue me. Don't sue me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and back then it was like, dude, that was the norm. It was, back then people were definitely crazier and uh, a lot tougher. Like, yeah. if you, even if you think way, way back gladiator days. Yeah. And then, and then your age, when you, when you were younger, um, you're telling these stories. And the stories you tell me, I believe because I know other people who had crazy stories in the back, back then. And then nowadays, it's uh, like I, I haven't experienced that. Dude, my teacher used to do duct tape and he used to use the rattan sticks and smack the shit out of us. Duct tape us and, and, and just smack the shit out of our legs. And he used to hit people in the head with the sticks and stuff like that. My older son over there grew up that way, you know, and that's the way the old school was. And he teaches class. And I'm, I'm like, dude, tone it down just a little bit, you know? And my wife's like, that's the way he was brought up. That's <laughs> just the way you told the, the, the dojo storming. The, the dojo, dojo storming. storming. That was just great stuff. I believe you because I know, I know um, I've heard of stories where like back in Brazil, they'll like go to each other's gyms and they'll fight bare knuckle and they'll beat each other until they're bleeding until their teeth falls out. Oh, wow. that's see, still that's, smoking uh, the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> dude, that's crazy. We had we had one guy in our old in the old old school, my teacher school, and I, I told you this. So at my teacher school, um, somebody was talking shit, and I walked into the school, and my teacher's like, "All right, grab your bags, we're going." And I'm like, "Uh oh, oh here we go." All right, so we grab the bags, and we walk into this guy's school, and it was just like out of the Last Dragon. We walk <laughs> into the school with our bags, and the teacher's Ooh, got master. dude. The teacher has thirty black belts out on the floor. And my teacher walks in, he's like, hey, we're here for light, you know, light sparring. We're going to do some friendly sparring. We want to welcome you to the neighborhood. And the guy's like, <laughs> the teacher's like, yeah, I don't think that's a good idea. And my teacher's like, Gonyo, I think it's a really, really good idea. We're going to have some fun. We're going to do some good stuff here. And then you see all his black belts all dispersing and like kind of getting off the floor. And they're all Making like use of the fire up rises. against the side of the wall. Like we don't see them, you know? <laughs> and my teacher's like, nope, we're going to do this right now, right here, right now. And the teacher's like, no, no, we're not going to. He's like, yep, we're going to. And then uh, finally the teacher's like, no, I, I think this is a really bad idea and you guys can leave. And my teacher looks at all of his students and says, this guy's been talking shit about me. Your teacher's a punk. You now, you now all of you students know that he won't get on the floor and spar with me. Just so anybody had any idea and then pack the bags and go. And then other times we would go to people's schools and they talk shit and sh sh strap on and have at it. You know, people get bloodied, people got hurt. And uh, like I said, I'm not proud of it. It's an experience that most people don't have anymore, but I'm not proud of it, but it's it's something we grew up with. It was like an everyday it's a, thing. It's definitely a great story. Um, and I'd like to... <laughs> I'd like to... Um, <laughs> it's something you can go to jail yeah. for yeah. nowadays. It's, so I'm, I'm like kind of known on the internet as like the guy who travels to different gyms and mm. trains. So a lot of people oh will God. be like, do you, do you like your dojo storming? Eh? And I'm like, but in a polite way. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, what you're I'm doing... Content. So what, <laughs> what you're doing is educating people and it's not in a bad way. I mean, I, you can turn it up when you want to turn it up and you can be mellow when you want to be mellow. And it could be a learning experience or it could be a, a learning experience, right? <laughs> one, of the, one way or the other. But um, the beautiful thing about it is that there's no malice. Not in the beginning anyway, right? You know, there's no malice. And if you feel comfortable in an area, then you can truly learn. Yep. And if you're not comfortable in the area, somebody gets hurt. You know, Jeff, I was going to be facetious and say, so you have your own school and all that. When's the last dojo uh, you stormed? And I realized it was today. Right now. We actually asked to have our own dojo, our own Quan, you know. But, but I, I really did want to ask. Uh, so you, you have your own school. How, how long has it been around for? How did that come oh, about? I, I don't own my own school. Oh, so you teach I'd like to one day. Okay. Um, so my story is I'm actually uh, from Canada. And um, I came to do a seminar in New York. And sorry. then uh, got, got, got. Sorry. <laughs> Say sorry. 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 Oh, all right. Sorry. It's all right. It's we're like, we're looking I, for the I, I said before, I changed that. Uh, Montreal, it's my, we always say sorry. 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 I said sorry. sorry. So it's also, uh, sorry. has Canadian family. So. Yeah, yeah, he was saying yeah. it. <laughs> very close, very close. Mm. Um, but anyways, um, just got offered a job here, and now I'm here uh, indefinitely. Excellent. So, yeah. 
Very cool. Yeah, I apologize, misunderstood earlier, but that's uh, that's very cool. Very nice. How long have you been uh, within you know the boundaries of New York? Uh, so I moved here in I moved to Queens and Flushing in J- July, and then in January I switched gyms. Oh, so it's wow. like, oh, so it's like very, very, very new. Very recent. Very recent. Yeah. Very recent. Wow. How long wow. have you been training and when did you start? Did oh, anybody, me in like, did, yeah, did anybody even yet. ask not that yet. question? Oh, not yet. Yeah, we're uh, here. That was uh, one of the most pertinent questions. That's the first asked. thing you <laughs> asked. I, I started training when I was 15, I believe. 31 now. Cool. Yeah, started with Muay Thai. No, no other martial arts background. Started with Muay Thai. Um, then when I wanted to get into MMA, I started training Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, obviously, mm. and wrestling. And then now, I'm just like an open book, trying to learn karate on my own, trying to learn boxing, trying to learn Kung Fu. I learned JKD for a bit, a bit of Wing Chun. I'm just trying to learn everything. And, and um, I truly believe that statement where like every martial art works, it just depends on who is doing it and uh, how you can mix it together. Mm. Because uh, when, I, when I was watching you spar, and, and Peter was also uh, making that same observation, he looked like he boxed, <laughs> but he's never boxed in his life. No, but he looks like he boxed. And he does a drop shift overhand, which is like a boxing move or, or you know, an MMA move. So like everything you do looks similar to MMA, just slight. Well, I guess it is MMA. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. That's the, ori- the original MMA. That's, yeah. the, that's the thing that people don't, you know, there's this weird, you know, and we've talked about this, the perception of Kung Fu. And that's one thing I want to ask you yeah, about as well. But, but but the but the there's this weird the perception. Yeah, there's yeah. this weird perception of and, and um, almost like exception rule with Kung Fu where it's like, you know, and 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 I think it's fair because again, mo- a lot of kung fu stylists yeah. and and who you know who even do fight suck. But it's this idea, it's you know, but it's this, <laughs> that S word has been flying around but, quite a bit. But, it's, but it's this idea of like, oh well, there's you know, like people who either watch MMA or or you know are at an MMA gym. They're like, all right, I know jujitsu, I know Muay Thai. That's kind of where I'm going to use for striking. Use judo to get to you know get to the ground game. Jujitsu covers my ground game and. You know, I guess karate kind of works. I've seen John Jones throw, throw a few things and like Machida, like, okay, that kind of is in my realm of what I think is real. But then I think of Kung Fu and it's just like satin outfits and and they have no, like there's such a um, an, an illiteracy of like what Kung Fu even is. Because even like when we were driving here, you were like, how many styles are there? Like, because again, and you were even saying, uh, Sigong, of like, you know, people just think it's Wing Chun and like, that's kind of it. It's like, they just see the Wing well, Chun you, movements. You know and, the reason because of that? Because like, he says no outwardly kung fu people are getting in the cage only a few of them few i know of i know a few of them but again like we have to ask jeff about his resume he's not going in there when they introduce him into the cage now coming out of canada he's trained in taekwondo <laughs> they don't say that is it he has a what six if, minute mile yeah like he's just a six minute stuff. mile yeah. Yeah. they don't, they don't, colors run, blue. They don't run your roster of mm. what you've trained he's got a 225 pound bench press <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know what i'm saying so it's just like <laughs> yeah right <laughs> you know it's just like if you're training in, a, in an art stick with that art but they didn't they make it their their identity you know what I'm saying? Mm. They make an identity. Mm. So uh, the reason why you don't see that is because there are no kung fu guys in there. There's very few. Yeah, and then the the the, the clips that they put on YouTube are Suck. just fucking horrible. And it's always <laughs> kung fu master versus BJJ, and the guy's out there and he's doing this with his hands. Yeah. I think it's and also he gets the, the, out. the Chinese movies. That, yeah. that kind of yeah, uh, that mm. King Shaw Brothers now yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and, and again, that goes to the perception where again they see there's so much there's so much more regularly circulated, yeah. you know, footage of, of MMA styles, and then there really isn't as much circulation with that. And I feel like that's combined with, um, I think I was I was talking to Peter about this of how with something like BJJ, there's a lot more point A to point B of going from Brazil to here, and kind of more of a standardization among BJJ schools of quality and known techniques not to say there isn't um kind of schisms and stuff of like you know um you know the gracies versus like 10th planet where it's there's different different I- ideologies about jujitsu but no gi yeah, yeah but, but but overall they'll be like oh, that kind of that's not real or like that's kind of shitty you know where with kung fu i mean it's like cultural revolution wars temple being burnt down multiple times people getting killed i mean what's interesting about and the love about our direct lineage of teachers is it directly goes back to china to monks in what the 1700s is that was that some, no, something I'm around there? The library and he is. Is it? It's around that. Around yes. that. Around well, that 16th, time. Seventeenth century. Yeah. So it goes yeah. to there of five monks, and then it goes to uh, in China for a while, then goes to Japan, uh, then goes to Colombia, then Puerto Rico, then to here, and that's a direct shot back from Sigong all the way back to there. So you know, to have it's. I feel like it's not as 
it's not as um, common to have that direct shot lineage and also to have such a whole system that really Sigong has been put, you've been piecing back together also. For a long time, yeah. It's right? so easy so, for it to get fractured and, and then that's why people don't know how to fight with it. They don't understand it. They don't. Well, every, every system gets fractured, right? Because one teacher can do something or he can't do something so he doesn't teach it mm. and then it gets lost in the system. And then it goes to the next person and the next student might be good at something else. But and then just starts getting diluted. And then it gets more. diluted, it gets fractured, it gets... And uh, when I got it, you know, I wanted to bring back the internals and the externals. So we teach the Tai Chi, the Qigong, uh, as long, you know, along with, you know, the, the Shukat Lohan Gung, which is the 18 hands of Lohan. Plus the, thank you. <laughs> um, plus, uh, plus all the Lohan techniques and the forms and then the breakdowns and everything else. And my teacher was very big on breaking down techniques and showing uh, the, the inner workings and the applications behind it. Right. And then. You know, we would we would watch fights all the time, and where we were, we would you know my teacher would bring us outside, and we'd sit down, and our our school was right across the street from a um, from a store, and in the back there'd be fights all the time. So he'd sit all of us down, and he'd go watch them, watch how they fight, and that would be like half of the half of the time at the school, and we watch these guys like scuffling and fighting in the back of a, of the store, and he like that's wrong, that's wrong, see that you got to move your feet this way, this that and the other thing, and you learn you learn and watch mm. it's uh <clears throat> it's kind of embarrassing for myself because you know i'm chinese and uh, i don't really know anything about it like i i literally thought kung fu was not jkd i sorry i thought jkd was not kung fu i thought um what other martial art was mentioning wing chun was wing not chun. kung fu but now i re realize kung fu is just another term for martial arts yeah, yeah and yeah. um i think it's just due to the media or due to just like movies um and when i was younger i just was led to stay away from Chinese martial arts and, and not until now am I realizing, oh, like this shit works. Yeah, yeah. You know? If, if, you went to, if you went to China and they were like, oh, what do you do? And you go, I could do Kung Fu. And they'd go, they look at you like you got exactly. a weird head, right? and, and that's what I grew up believing. And, and now today, like obviously as I got older and more mature and just more experienced in martial arts and meeting other people, I already knew before coming today that Kung Fu is effective. Karate is effective. I learned on my own. But today... For the first time, I actually experienced that it is effective from sparring with you guys. Mm. It works. <laughs> Thank you for, I'm very glad you got that impression. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It's in, so in, cool. in China, the term is wushu. Wushu means war arts. You sound like jelly there. But <laughs> if, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, as, I'm as dub. I'm the dub. Yeah. Like, so, but if, if you English got, I got, a, I got a story. But if you come, if you come here, is that the videotape, please? Not the videotape. No, the VHS. The, no, the, of the chains. Oh, so <laughs> when um, I went loud when sheet. so the term wushu nowadays and here in the states when you say you do wushu you look you look um you look down and no, I don't want to even say it that way but when people talk about traditional gong fu and a traditional and and then wushu wushu is more of a modern style of martial arts modern style of Chinese martial arts where um when the government became communist. The government gave back to the people uh, their golden treasure, which is martial arts, but made it more of an athletic, uh, beautiful, um, tamed down, tamed down martial art where it's not going to be as a, it's not effective fighting wise. It's just very, very showy, right? But the skills are there. These guys are, are athletes. They're they're warriors. They're they're you know they're skilled. But the martial application has been taken out of it. So when you in the states say that you do wushu, then you're not really doing kung fu. So in the States, it's a little different. So when you say Kung Fu, you're talking about traditional Kung Fu. You know, you're talking about uh, Wing Sun, you're talking about Hong Gar, you're talking about Zhao Gar, you're talking about uh, Lo Han Chuan, you're talking about Tong Bei, you're talking about um, Bai Ji Chuan, you're talking about all these different styles. But when you talk about Wushu, well now you're talking about Nan Chuan and Chan Chuan, and you're talking about all the Wushu sets that you learn, which are all standardized forms that they learn to compete with. So the Marshall main style gymnastics. that you do is Sanda? No, the the main thing that we do is Lo Han Chuan, mm -hmm. which is the enlightened, enlightened fist. So when you say Sanda, it's like saying sparring. That's it. So wow. in it Chinese, free, free Sanda just means free sparring. Yeah. That's what it means. You take your style, like Lo Han Chuan or Hong Ga, and then you do Sanda with it. Right. Right? Just like in Karate, it's Kumite. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's the same thing. Same thing so right? Kumite means free fighting. So you take your style, Shonen Ru, Ishin Ru, Goju Ru, whatever, and then you do Kumite. Gotcha. Right? So the term Sanda is newer. It used to and be Sanshao. Yeah. So Sanshao is harder 
for Guaylao, you know, for <laughs> Lofan, for, 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 for white people, <laughs> right? So it's harder for white people to say, so, right? I think that they, they, they made it easier and said Sanda because it's free fighting, right? Why don't we throw an A in there? So Sanxiao is harder, but it's the same thing, right? So Sanda came from Sanxiao, and then Sanxiao really came from Lei Tai, uh, Lei tai fighting, which was, which was a big part of the, uh, the Chinese culture and the Chinese community, because martial arts was the hub of the community. It was a very big, important part of the community. Um, so that's, 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 that's where that goes. But Sandai is easy to say. It rolls off the tongue a lot easier. And you know, now you have Wushu stylists that are competing in Sanda. And most of the people that are doing Sanda don't do Wushu forms. Most of the Sanda fighters are Sanda fighters. And then most of the Wushu, Wushu, Wushu competitors are Wushu competitors. It's very rare that you see Wushu guys doing Sanda. What we do here is we do traditional Northern Shaolin Kung Fu and we apply our fighting with, uh, with our forms. So we take the forms, we break them down and we apply them and we use the footwork. That's why we switch fight a lot mm -hmm. and we switch from one side to the other. And uh, it's important, it's important. I also realized um, that Kung Fu is, in, in, oh, actually we brought this up, but we're, we started with saying karate is a lot more advanced. Um, oh, I'm cramping. <gasps> I'm cramping, old man cramp. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm gonna say I think uh, kung fu is also a lot more advanced. So you know, in Muay Thai or even in boxing, we don't. I didn't switch my stance until ten years of training. Then now I'm dabbling with my stance switch, whereas mm. you guys do it right from the beginning. Mm. And I just think it's a, just a more difficult martial arts, and it just requires more time. And uh, nothing against boxing. I love boxing, and I'm not saying boxing is not good either. I'm just saying boxing is just simpler. To mm. begin with, and easier to get better at. Mm. Hands up, shell guard. Even the, the advanced guys drop their hands, right? Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's it's serious. that's absolutely right because the switching is we're it's implemented from the beginning, and there's points in training like first you got to get over the hump of the physical exhaustion, which is by me personally yeah, what I've had to deal with physically. Yeah, and then from there it's the mental exhaustion of taking what you're doing on one side and then mirroring it, and then you just got an oatmeal brain at the end of it. You just got <laughs> yeah. nothing going on up there. It's just like I don't even it's know how to walk anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, the difficulty of going to other schools and you know, just going to other schools, the, I guess the, the anxiety of going to other schools. I, and I'm not sure if anybody's ever asked you this before, but the anxiety of going to other schools and being like, oh, fuck, here we go. You know, like, what's, what's it going to be like this time? You know, how, when you first started, what was it? And how did you get over it? And, you know, what was the, what was the end result or the learning? I would say when I first started, it would be like, yeah, I don't know what to expect. <laughs> um, Especially when people see the camera, they mm. will tend to escalate things. Especially if I go to an MMA gym where there's pro fighters. Mm. I've had a handful of uh, gyms where they saw the camera and they just went at it. Go to town. I always remember, yeah. the, sorry, the, the video of you fighting the that like 17-year-old like Moroccan kid in, the, in the ring. You know what's funny? <laughs> I taught a seminar right before that happened. And that was Dude. the first round of... Uh, of the seminar sparring. So usually people want to spar me. Uh, so I, I taught a seminar and then, okay, it's sparring time. Everyone's like, okay, gear up. And then he was the first person I sparred and he attended my seminar. So maybe he didn't like my seminar. <laughs> I don't know. Or from the comments, he's Moroccan. Apparently Moroccans are all, they all spar hard. <laughs> or, that video was wild. Or, or in Amsterdam or Netherlands, they're all, they all spar hard. Apparently. Mm. But it doesn't make sense because the five other people I sparred after that were really controlled. So I don't know. Is that the one where the, the guy didn't come from the school, but he decided to join and take the seminar? Was that that No, one? no, that was the gigantic karate guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Taekwondo guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, so my God. That, dude, we that video. That, I remember my watching, wife was like, watching that the other day. I just hate watching videos where people are just like, you know, you see people and they're just like, all right, guys, we're going to do a few CTE rounds real quick. And you're like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> like, you know what? It doesn't make any sense. Brain just, damage. Just to clear the air, he was a very nice guy. I've spoken to him because mm -hmm. uh, I was hosting a camp at, at that uh, Bali training center. Okay. And he was the Muay Thai instructor at the gym. Okay. And I guess he they it's a pure fitness facility. They they don't okay. spar or anything like that. So he wanted to take this opportunity and jump in and spar. And obviously I'm the first person to spar with him because I'm the, the coach. And uh, yeah, touch gloves. He threw a kick, Superman punch. It didn't knock me out, but it was hard. Mm. And he was also like gigantic. Oh, yeah. So, like that, so maybe it wasn't intentional. <laughs> maybe it wasn't intentional. 
but that pissed me off. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. It's it like right opening back. up a round like yeah, that. I it's like it right you set back. the tone bad. Um, yeah, that's a bad tone. It's a to bad set. tone to set. <laughs> um, with that said, now when I go to, well, you know what? First, I want to say thank you because me coming here, uh, I was actually speaking to Peter about it. I already knew that it would be a nice day just because you guys are so organized and just had a phone call with me. Just the history. I already knew coming in would be nice. Normally, uh, whenever I, I, I usually travel to different gyms when I travel to different countries. Like if I go to um, Thailand or Vietnam or whatever, I'll reach out to those gyms and I'll send them an email being, hey, you know, uh, I'm a content creator looking to make content, exposure for your gym. Can I swing by? And usually they say yes or no. Um, and usually they have an idea. Now, funny story is some people will search up my channel and they'll watch like one or two videos, but they don't really know what it's all about, what my channel is all about. So I went to Korea one time and sent the same email. Hey, I'm looking to do some tactical sparring. Hmm. All Give in caps. exposure to the gym. <laughs> and then uh, Just mail, uh, mail them that I, word. I got oh. there. I got there and um, shook his hand and, and he's a nice guy and everything. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I, I've watched your videos. Um, you spar hard, eh? I'm like, no, 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 you're, 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 you're like, what? you watch the wrong videos. You watch the wrong videos. Yeah. You're trying to play one up. You're like, hold on. So one I just want to make it clear that I'm actually, I want to do technical sparring, light technical sparring. And then he, he, he turns around and speaks to the, to all the, the fighters. And he's like, uh, he speaks in Korea. Yeah. In, in, not Korea, in Korean. Yeah. And I'm assuming that he said like, oh, he wants to spar light. But I don't know what he said. Yeah. But they all. Kill yeah. him. They'll yeah. try to kill you, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Two, the, the two first guys were really hard. But yeah. Man, it's so funny. And, well, what I'm interested in as well is we, we kind of touched on this, but you know, we're kind of in, in regards to getting exposure to other martial arts is only either through you know either YouTube or through again people either we know that we can talk to or the t few times that we have gotten to train. But you know, speaking of speaking to someone who is one in the the pro MMA space, both training and, and taking part in, but also I'm oh, sure. Oh yeah, what 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 uh, thing you fight on? Is That's it right. one? Is it one uh, leadership? One champ? Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Um, is you know just getting a kind of a bird's eye view into the perception and possibly the um, you know how perception of traditional martial arts in kind of those circles or in people that you know or in those in those spaces and also um, if there is any people adhering to those or, or or with traditional backgrounds or it is more kind of MMA like eh, kung fu and traditional stuff doesn't really work like like I'm interested in like the perception of the circles that you're in of people who either tr fight professionally go to MMA gyms or like that because of course we have our perceptions as well of what we kind of also think MMA guys are like, and I'm, you know, trying to bridge that gap of yeah. bridge that gap. I think know. is important. You don't know. I yeah. think if in that makes sense. General, I think if I, if I am understanding uh, well, I th uh, generally most people think traditional martial arts are not ineffective mm -hmm. for the most part. I think karate is the first traditional martial mm -hmm. arts that proved themselves. Sure. And I hope that with UFC booming in China, having UFC champion um, and just more. UFC fighters from China, more sign the fighters and more yeah, yeah, yeah. fighters will come on. Hopefully, that's the, the next martial arts will be Kung Fu. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would say karate is the first that kind of like came out. Whereas before that, karate also sucked. And it was just Muay Thai, just wrestling and yeah. BJJ. When you think of MMA, Muay Thai and BJJ, that's mm -hmm. it. But it's funny, back then, BJJ was the almighty martial arts. You have BJJ, you're going to win because the Gracies came in, nobody knew Jiu-Jitsu, they fucked everyone up. Yeah, mm -hmm. so Sakurai now, came around. Now, yeah. now, BJ is actually less effective and it's now becoming no-gi or just grappling and sport Jiu-Jitsu. Because they've had to evolve to like combat Jiu-Jitsu, right? To kind of bridge yeah. that gap a little bit. But, but open nowadays power. you hear this all the time. Um, I teach this myself. If I'm on the bottom, I'm not trying to submit you. I'm trying to scramble up to my feet. You mm -hmm. take me down, I'm going to just scramble and get back up. I'm not going to mm. even try to stay on the ground. Unless you're like a legend in Jiu-Jitsu. Unless you're like Paul Meow or something. Mm. But even if you're a black belt, you hit once, you're a brown belt. You hit again, you're purple belt. You hit again. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and, and nowadays, it's like people realize that Jiu-Jitsu is great, but you got to mix it up with everything else. Mm. If you do just Jiu-Jitsu, this, yeah, it's and there and there seems there seems guard. there seems to be I don't want to I don't want yeah, to make I don't want to make this yeah. make this phrase something but I feel like you know the kind of more of that uh you know that like what, what I feel like has heard is like the blue belt mentality of, of where it's like jujitsu's fucking the shit and it's just like and they're like they're like you know striking you're gonna die and then they come in and it's but it is there is that I think I'm sure it kind of goes both ways with both just striking and both just grappling of like 
there is a middle ground of kind of what you need. And that's why people, you know, will cross train and things like that. And that's also why, again, with what we do, you know, there is such a nice holistic approach to it where basically outside of strict ground game jujitsu, Brazilian jujitsu, pretty much everything else is in there. I mean, you know, aspects of judo, wrestling, sweeps, throws, you know, you know, um, you know, um, um, what is Chino. it? Um, China, which so all so all um, small, small joint joints. locking, wrist, mm-hmm. elbows, pressure points, you know, all of that stuff is all, and it all kind of fits into one package. Where again, it's not like go to your jujitsu coach, go to this coach. It's like all right, we're going to start out wide, and then we're going to move right into clinch work. You're going to sweep them, you're going to dump them, you're going to break their wrist, you're going to do this, you're going to do that, and it's kind of this one holistic package where. Um, so I, I think it's, yeah, it's, it's cool to see that it's kind of goes both ways where like you're saying with jujitsu, where it's kind of moving back, it's kind of, uh, recalibrating to moving from great jujitsu back to like, okay, let's, let's settle down a little bit where, cause you've always said too with, you're like, yeah, listen, like jujitsu is great, but like if, if we're fighting on concrete and I dump you on your head, you're like, you're not. Getting you're you're, you're, yeah, not, you're gonna be either. unconscious. Yeah. 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 Uh, I just, you know? I, just, I believe that all martial arts need other martial arts and Again, MMA used to be Muay Thai, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. But mm. now I'm like, if you look at my channel right now or just watch me spar in general, most people are like, you started with Muay Thai? <laughs> because yes. As a matter of fact, and I was mentioning it to him because we do like fight commentary on the side and watching students spar. And I'm like, dude, he moves almost like us. Like you're switching the way you were doing the karate stances and your footwork and stuff like that. I was like, he couldn't just spar with, with Muay Thai. He had to do something else. Because your 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 stance is not your really traditional. Oh, no, I've, I've changed it. I've, I've, changed it. I've seen you. You know, you get into that little bit when you start to lift the knee and you start to check and stuff. And I'm like, that's a little bit of the Muay Thai. That's so so so. No, I did that only because it was kicks only. Yeah. When it was okay. kicks only, I did that. Oh, okay. Once it once there's hands, I choose the wider stance. I choose footwork, and the reason why. Sorry, I didn't move away from Muay Thai, but the reason why I moved away from Muay Thai footwork is because yeah. it's non-existent. It's, uh, it's stationary. It's too stationary, and I don't like to stand and bang. Yeah. And I mm. like to I like to move. I like to use the footwork. Sure. And um, I love takedowns, double legs. So mm. can't can't yeah. stand that tall. And the, and the the standing one that you do is the, sweet, the almost identical yeah. to the Iron Room. That's a, that's a Kung Fu so move. That's when yeah. I was looking at his videos, I kept asking him, I said, you sure this guy didn't do anything else? <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> we, we do that all the time. That is like our go-to mm. movement. Okay, okay. Yeah, which is really neat. And that's an, that's an Iron Broom technique. I just think it's all the same. I think um, now you can say, well, Muay Thai is not MMA. Because <laughs> if you fight with just Muay Thai, Demetrius Johnson versus R- Rodney. Rodney couldn't do anything. Oh my God! Yeah, that was like I remember watching commentary of Demetrius Johnson talking about that fight because Rodney is just like his head is just like a rock. So you hit him and he's like, and he just you know he's like he like gains hit points when you hit him and he just like it's like you're fighting an anime character. It's ridiculous. But then I remember he was like, yeah, he's like I fucking hit him with an overhand and I was like, oh, and he just was like. He was like, oh, fuck. He was like, all right. So, so, then, so then like round three, he was like, all right, I got to strangle this motherfucker. Because like, I got to, I have to literally put him out because he's not going to stop. Like, and, and, he, and he, he got him down. I think it was like a, like a rear naked Pretty choke naked and he guy. fucking strangled him unconscious. Amazing. Um, Amazing. I'm just going to double check. My sure. Um, but, and, and I think, I, again, I was talking to, I was talking to Peter about this where that's a thing that, especially with a lot of the content that uh, Seagong and Sifu were doing is, again, to bridge that gap where it's like, okay, I understand Muay Thai, I understand karate a little bit, I understand this, but Kung Fu, what is it? Is it Wing Chun? What does it consist of? How does it work? I just see sticky hands. I see this, whereas... What is what you do and why is it Wing yeah. Chun? Where, where, <laughs> why that is? So we were talking about how the temple get burnt down and, you know... I think it all has to do with Bruce Lee. Not necessarily, because... Most people don't know the fact that Kung Fu has been in this t- country since the 1800s. Kung Fu has been in this country for, for, de- for centuries, and since the 1800s, since they started coming over here building the railroads. Kung Fu has been over here, right? The problem is... is He's the library guy. Man. <laughs> I, I, I like reading. It's just, I don't. It's our <laughs> story. The, the Jedi librarian. Yeah, yeah. dude, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm, not, I'm but, not that. The, but the problem is, is the when these things were happening and these guys are taking over China, a lot of these masters went to do what? To go fight for their country. And that was the, the Boxer Rebellion. The ones that left weren't necessarily the, the, the ones that were fighting in those battles, right? So a lot of these instructors that came to this country had no fighting experience. Mm. And these are the people you were learning from. So that's why they had this thing where they were teaching you, but they weren't really teaching you because a lot of these guys had no skill, mm. you know? So they were, you know, who knows if they were like, the progenitors of their style, right? And there's 
documented, document, you know, these guys having no fighting experience whatsoever. You know what I mean? So a lot of the times they can't produce those things at work because they never did it. Mm. They were never in competition. They were never fighting. They were never sparring. They were, you know, all they did was train. And then when shit got, well, they, they jetted. They left, mm-hmm. they left the country. Yeah, and then you, know? you have the elimination of the four olds when Mao took over. Yeah. Oh yeah, they were yeah. they were killing martial artists that left and right. Left and right. I, These martial artists were cooks. They ran into like restaurants and they became cooks. And then you had people defecting here and and hiding and most of the greatest martial artists that came out of China are not living in China anymore. They're here in the States, they're in Poland, they're in Australia, they're mm. everywhere else but right. China. Mm. So. And uh and to to kind of to that point uh Bridging back to kind of the work that that um, Si Gong and Zifu were doing with with the YouTube channel oh, is to again kind of yeah, yeah, more kidding. we're trying to we're trying to more <laughs> norm, normalize kung fu as it's not as different than what people think it is because I think again there's this kind of this like foreign like antibody like what the fuck is this this doesn't work this is stupid where like again like I'll tell people like hey listen like um, again like the walkthrough technique that's what we call it where you kind of you go into a horse stance and you do the technique that's kung fu you know um, every time we'll do a lot of times we'll do sway jiao which is like our grappling or judo it's like war wrestling um, you know we do underhooks we do overhooks it's all it's just called different things you know a um, I forgot what the jujitsu move is uh, where you have um, you have the um, it's like a shoulder or, or an arm lock and they're usually on their I think they're on their stomach I forgot what it's called um, but like that's we do that standing where we we bring them Russian tie two and one what is it uh, never. Um, sorry. Uh, we're basically like we have we have their arm bridged and splayed out and open, and we're pressing down on the elbow, but just standing. So it's like a very like there's so much stuff that like because there's only so many ways you can manipulate the body. It's exactly. There's only so many ways you can punch, you can kick, you can throw. So it's we're trying to normalize it as yeah. this is no. It, it's so much more similar this to the shit a, that you this do. Is a weird analogy. I hope nobody gets offended. Okay. But somebody will. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm. So I have a crazy story that happened to me which have made me become uh, spiritual and believe in a higher being. But I used to be non-religious at all. I'm still not religious, but I believe in a higher being. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> again, not to offend anybody, but okay. I believe that obviously there's got to be one religion. That's true. And I believe this religion has been passed down differently. Mm-hmm. And now there's different sure. versions. Different I think it, martial sure. arts, at the end of the day, like human beings are learning how to fight. Like Everything has got to be somewhat similar. Of course. And, and we're realizing that everything is pretty much the same. We're working just, with the same just, body. We can't. It's just style. Mm-hmm. You know, you imagine just it's differentiated different martial arts as different styles. Would you want to tell that story that happened to you? It's a little too long. <laughs> okay. It's okay. <laughs> he keeps, he keeps, <laughs> no, 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 we're getting no, close. We're getting no, close. No problem. Um, one of the things that I realize that I try to impart on you guys is the stuff that you're learning that I'm teaching that he taught and that sure job hammered home is, and I tell people all the time is you have to be of two worlds, right? You have to make sure sh- here to, tr- to tradition, but it also has to work in the ring or in the cage right? or anywhere else. Or on anywhere the else. So, but the things that you're learning, the traditional stuff you was learned was never meant for competition. Hmm. It was never meant for that. It was meant for killing people. So that wrist lock, that, that sweep, that dump, that things like that, that was meant to end people. You know what I'm saying? But you can't do that in a training environment mm. because obviously you have no students, you have no training brothers. And so sorry. you have to learn to take those, up, no. up, up. you have to learn <laughs> to take those principles, those techniques, that locks, those mm. locks and adapt them for that arena yeah mm. for it's, competition because you always hear that oh like we can't spar because you know it's my too stuff's deadly. too deadly right. that's what i was gonna oh, say yeah. You, yeah. Yeah. it's too deadly if right. you can't tone down your stuff and work with somebody you're never gonna get that pressure you're never gonna understand what's gonna work you don't know how somebody's gonna move i don't know how jeff moves watch a lot of his videos but you don't know how jeff's gonna move when you throw techniques you the only way you do and the only way you get to know somebody it's touch it's hands, a touch hands. Mm. and now you get to know them and it's like oh this is great mm. i love the movement the head movement the shoulder blocking yeah. you know it's, it's all similar you have to work with different people too i'm so used to mm. working with ryan that when i work with other people i'm like all right wait a minute i gotta take a second i you gotta, have get, to used re- to, yeah, you gotta, I gotta get used you're to not it. fighting someone I'm that's like, shaped like a used car salesman i'm sparring with you and i'm like sweeps that you know we do to each other all the time. I'm trying to get it in. I'm like, ah, oh, his legs are shaped differently. I'm putting my stuff in places and I'm like, damn it, I'm not getting it off. I'm not getting it off. I'm looking for openings. I'm not getting it. But that's why it's so important 
that we do things like this and we get together and we ex experience different people and we humble ourselves and we're up with new people, you know? So thank you. Yeah, so thank, thank you, you very you much for being for here. Me. Now, I know we're getting close. Um, is there any kind of closing statement or any kind of impression you want to leave before we end the episode? Um, honestly, Kung Fu's awesome. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Um, thank you, thank you, for, I, thank you for the experience. It. Yeah, um, it means a lot. Thank I, you. I truly mean it. Um, I'm, I'm, glad, to I'm learn. glad, and I'm glad that you're saying that really because it, it's, it's nice. It's nice that people from different styles can really enjoy and appreciate. I just believe people need to be educated in martial arts. Um, yeah. There's too much real fake martial arts out there, like Bushido. Like, have you seen those guys where the guy will run and he'll be like, Oh God. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 We, 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 we've done, we, yeah, we've done yeah. videos that on that. That stuff is fake. We have but, a couple of yeah. My reputation's on the line. Okay. I could say that I sparred with you guys all. I believe it is effective. Wonderful. We got we got the, we got the Jeff Chan pass. It will kill. It will kill. It will kill. Jeff Chan to the younger Jeff Chan because I legit used to believe that it was absolute bullshit. Well, that's yeah. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, eighty percent of it is eighty yeah. percent of it doesn't work. Mm. It's the twenty percent people that apply the techniques that make it effective. So yeah. mm. and just so you're saying yeah. that, we'll take it. Yeah. We'll we, take it. You're we allowed to make up, up your own words. It's okay. Well, that's a new it's, word. It's more out in the open now because of internet, but it's it's been going on for decades. Oh, 100%. Because we used to sure. talk smack about all different types of schools, styles, and stuff like that. I grew up hearing that within that. Yeah, that style is shit. Yeah, and it'd be different kung fu styles, and they'd be just talking. I'm like, what? And they're looking at it. I was like, oh yeah, they can't fight. <laughs> but it's been around, but now it's so much in the forefront because of, of social media and, and MMA and MMA. Mm. MMA is a good thing for me, I feel, because it brought out the charlatans mm. and it brought out, you know, the, it, here, does it work or doesn't it work? Mm. Proof is in the pudding. You know, right. can you apply it or can you apply it? And mm. if you can't apply it, go back to the drawing board, figure out what you did wrong, mm. you know, and that's it. And that to me, MMA is a good thing because it really brought out it's forcing people to become better. It's mm. forcing people to take their style and go, does my style suck or do I suck? Yeah. And how do I get better? It's, uh, it's also forcing people to <clears throat> go through, because what happened was is during the tournaments, a lot of people just trained for the tournaments as the tournaments started getting watered down. So they lost that edge of what he grew up with because I got a taste of it. Like and he was telling you, you know, this dude was fighting and it's a little bit different experience than what you go through. He's fighting every single Sunday, hard sparring every single Sunday, every week. And then the next day he had to go to work and then do it all over again, right? So you'd be there for eight hours a day. You have to perform, do weapons, whatever you're gonna do and spar and then get up and go to work and do the shit all again next week, you know? And I was just like, you did what? You know? So when I was just like complaining about going to tournaments, he's like, yeah, stop being a bitch, get in there and compete, you know what I mean? A lot of these schools started to realize that they're, they're training a fight training, what well, I call it fight training. All they did was practice forms, do their little self-defense spar like once every two weeks, and that they called that they were ready to, 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 to fight. Yeah. But nobody got in there, got push-ups, sit-ups, do rounds, road work, all that kind of stuff. Where, that stuff got lost. Got lost. So when somebody like you or they go to a school, right? And the instructor gets on the floor, they send their best guy and then they get handed, your know, ass handed to them with two hands. And it was like, that style sucked. No, you guys missed the other piece of the puzzle. Yeah. How many places did you go where the instructor actually got on the floor and sparred? Oh, see? Calculating. See? Calculating. Uh, honestly. Oh, honestly, I, I, I don't know. Usually I just spar the, the, the students or the fighters. Wow. Yeah, yeah, most likely you'll never spar the yeah. person who runs this, the gym. The head most instructor. Um, the goat guy was probably one of the one of the. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, that. I love. I like that video. I was watching, it I like and that, you yeah. were like, you know, he's he's an older guy and everything else. I'm like, that guy can't be any older than like in his 40s because the Thai fighters, you know, after about 35, man, their bodies are beat to shit, so they stop fighting at like 35, 38. He's a special one, though. He's great. He is. Mm. I like. I think he's like. The best. Mm. By far. The, and, I, best. and you know what? His tank, he was like, just, he was playing and he was having a good time. And I'm like, holy shit. You know, yeah, there's like, something, ugh. I think there's, there, there's, there seems to be something special mm -hmm. about just 
you know, with the tie that, you know, just smoking and drinking. I think we've got to get, <laughs> we're gonna get into that. Yeah, you know, I, I think that's I what we're missing. Again. I think that's what I'm missing. If I just, just a pack a day and just kind of You probably got to yeah. get out of the ring and just start <laughs> smoking, you know? Yeah. That's what I should have done. I should have had a cigarette between rounds. You know? <laughs> but yeah, no, he yeah. definitely is. He's some, watching him fight and it's just, again, the yeah. effortlessness. And I think there's something to be said kind of with the hard sparring, seeing kind of the more, not that they don't hard spar, but the, I, what I perceive as kind of the more method that a lot of, that is adopted in a lot of, um, fight gyms over there is that it's just a lot of play it's a lot of it's a lot of actual technical playing around movement simulation you know but funny i uh sorry it's not that funny but i've been to thailand a handful of times mm -hmm. i spar with tons of uh, thai instructors thai sure. fighters no thai has ever ever escalated on me oh that's because of Except the set culture soundtrack <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, it was a little bit. It was still nothing okay, bad. Okay. But he, yeah, like, but, but I saw him like he apologized every time. Yeah, he did yeah, it. yeah, yeah. So I was, I was, I was very surprised. I, I wonder why. Like, and and for me, this was maybe the second or one time where I'm like, he hit me hard. Yo, go ahead, hit me hard. I'm not gonna hit you hard back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't want to like, feel that. Like, yeah, yeah, I don't want to feel that. Happen. That's fine. You want to hit me hard? Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Well, guys, I, I think uh, I think we've yeah, run, wanna, we've run out of time. time. Yeah. I think we're at yeah. that at that point. Yeah. yeah thank we'll, you. We'll take we'll take it to the uh, to the airport. Uh, to the airport. Yeah. You're going somewhere else now. Take a plane thirty miles. You know. But thank you very much for being here. I would love to you know come down to your gym whenever we can i would love to collaborate in the future do more work i would yeah, love yeah. to be able to even show if you know if, if you'd be willing to do some form work so you can understand how form translates to self-defense oh, and yeah. fighting because we yeah, so we, much. we, we so did much. our sandad drills and we did our you know everything with gloves on today i would love for you to be able to see how like a traditional form gets put into oh, that oh yeah we could do tong bai chuan yeah and break it down and have him see tong bai chuan is a that. very Ooh. famous form that has a million iterations but Sigong has done the due diligence and cool. and really torn that up into how it can be used. I encourage you to film it and post it. We have, we, 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 we have. We'll it's a, okay, I'll show me, honestly. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so just on YouTube, when you, if you, you go back to YouTube, we've been for, I don't know how long, the last how many months, we've been one video a week is like a myth busters of like either a certain technique or something. And then the other one is form and function. We break apart. It's like usually three parts per form, take pieces of the form show the traditional movement without someone, throw the traditional application, and then show a modern application. Yeah, the playlist with is people. called a Kung Fu Instructor Beats Up Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> someone, called me, someone called me Harry Potter in one of the comments, and I was like, kind of annoyed, but also kind of excited. So, it was you know, kind of funny, because I was like, who is that? And I had to go look it up. <laughs> yeah. I was like, Harry Potter? Gonna teach Daniel Wait a minute, he does look like Harry so Potter. fucking mean. I was like, Jesus. <laughs> yes. Come on. Oh, I mean, I'm already getting the shit kicked out of me. They're like, yeah, you look stupid too. I'm like, please. Because <laughs> <laughs> that guy's probably like drinking a two liter of Fanta, like zits all over his face. Like, yeah, yeah down in the basement bush. watching yeah. anime porn. Yep. That's what happens. Yep. <laughs> That's the comment section. Well, on that note, <laughs> thanks everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're going we're gonna to end the episode yeah, in the well. comment section. Yeah, yeah but, but no, thank you very much yeah. for being here. We really appreciate it. Thank you guys. You know, humbled and, and privileged to have you know yeah. you guys come down and, and again to be able to bridge this gap and have a school that's somewhat local that we can now you know ex exchange with and and you know kind of grow that grow that yeah. community it's it's that's what martial arts is really about is training and yeah. being humble and you know and that our together. styles are more similar than they are different yep and um c4 Awul is hosting a tournament uh july 9th so I think it would be really cool if you can come as a spectator and, 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 and check out how what a tra traditional uh, traditional tournament is. Yeah, and they do Sanda like. fighting there. Mm -hmm. oh, cool. Yeah, so yeah. we're, we're going to be competing. And C4 is a uh, seven star. July 9th? July 9th, it's either July 9th yeah. or July 7th. You'll I'm probably sure. July 7th, I ha I'm heading back to Ottawa. Okay. Yeah. So, well, the, but, well the, the invitation is extended, but thank still. You. Yeah, of course. Well, John, this is, a, this is your job. Unless you guys have anything you want to add before we no, end. No, this is a great experience. Yeah, I like it. Um, it's, a, a, like, again, a, a breath of fresh air to have another stylist come in and work. Yeah, and we haven't had this yeah. in a really, really long time. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping that it happens more uh, because we need it for you guys, right? Because I'm getting tired. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, it's tiring. It's, it's tiring, man. It's tiring to keep it up. Um, I love it. I want to keep it up as much as I can, you know, but again, you need other people to work. And mm. he, I came up there because he's like, he had all these martial arts friends and he just like, yeah, come with me. That was it. I was like, all right, where are we going? He's just get your bag and come. Mm. So I got to experience working with different people because I just kept following him. Mm -hmm. And then he was, all right, get in that spar. But I don't know. Yet. No, get in that spar. <laughs> and like I told you, my first tournament was not in the night. <laughs> it was Puerto Rico. 
right? Puerto yeah, Rico. Puerto Rico. <laughs> and I didn't know the rules. I didn't know the thing. Where there is no rules and there is no nothing. We yes. got to get him. We got to get him out of no here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> fight. All right. So hey, John, this is your job. Anyway, Sifu, Sigong, and Jeff Chan, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on Thank the show. You. It's been an excellent day of training, uh, excellent day of watching and recording for me. It was what a great time. Thank you all so much. We also want to thank our Discord members, our Patreons, our followers, all of our listeners. And thank you. This has been the Martial Mind Podcast. I don't know what camera we're looking into, so <laughs> that's it. <laughs>